Welcome to Uncontained, episode 28. I'm your host, Aaron Static Render, and on today's show, I talk with fellow Bay Area podcaster Steve O'Sullivan. Steve hosts the Bay Area Band Show, where he interviews bands that are from the San Francisco Bay Area or bands that happen to be touring through the Bay. You can catch brand new episodes of the Bay Area Band Show every Wednesday on your favorite pod player. It was fun to sit down with Steve with both of us being from broadcasting backgrounds and also our shows kind of touching on the same subject matter. It was cool to sit down, talk shop, and find out how Steve lives uncontained. How is it going today, Steve, and welcome to Uncontained. Hey, Static. Thanks for having me. Uh, Today is going pretty well. Today is going pretty well. I've had my share of technical difficulties over the last few days that kind of made me bang my head on the table for a while, but I feel like I've recovered and ready to move forward over the next several days, get back in the swing of things. <laughs> you and I both, you and I both, uh, for the listeners out there, this episode was supposed to be recorded like three days before it actually got recorded, uh, simply because of the technical difficulties in the air that have been going around this weekend, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, when you're doing a podcast, as, as you well know, I mean, you've got to be a jack of all trades. You've got to be the producer. You've got to be the showrunner, the, the host. But you've also got to be your back end, you know, your own back end person, you're, if that doesn't sound right. Uh, but you're <laughs> your own technical geek. And uh, when you bring new software into the mix or, the, or software goes south, it can really trip you up for a little bit because there's not a lot of direct support, you know? So yeah, it, it can be, it can be a headache, but it's a good headache. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the YouTubes. I went to the chat boards and finally figured out what I had to do, but, uh, yeah, it can be stressful. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for, for the listeners of my show that haven't had a chance to listen to your show yet, the Bay Area Band Show, mm-hmm. you want to tell a little bit about your show and a little bit about yourself as well, Steve? Yeah, well, um, let's see. Um, I'm a stay-at-home dad. Uh, I studied broadcasting, radio and television production back in college, somewhere back in the Pleistocene era. Um, this was, I used to edit tape with a razor blade and, and tape and a grease pencil. So oh, the real to the real, real to real stuff, man. And, you know, doing bump edits on one and two inch tape on Ampex tape decks and so on and so forth. And, um, ended up working in high tech for about 22 years. And, uh, a few years ago decided I'd kind of had enough and, um, been stri- striking out on my own here and I decided to get into podcasting kind of harkens back to my broadcasting days I get kind of the the audio itch scratched and <laughs> what prompted the um what prompted the uh, editorial direction of the podcast is that well I've been a struggling failing musician for like the last 10, 15 years. I, over that time, I really don't play much of anything. I can do C, D, G, and A on a guitar, but don't ask me to switch between them. And, um, (laughs) and I've tried picking up piano and that didn't work. Um, but one thing I did learn over this time was I've met a lot of musicians and I've gotten, gotten to know a couple of them. And I found that I really enjoyed talking with them. Uh, I, 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 I'm under the impression, and I could be wrong, but I'm under the impression that there's sort of a common thread to a lot of them. There's a certain optimism. Um, even if they're, oh, yeah. even if their music is on the darker side, the, the, the artists themselves, I think tend to be more optimistic, um, huh. have a lot of tenacity and these are qualities that, that I like in people. And, uh, so I decided that I wanted to talk to them and then I, so that's how the Bay Area Band Show came about. Do you think that optimism has to do with having to overcome so many failures as a musician or in the entertainment industry? There's so much rejection. Do you think it came from having to deal with that? Or do you think that optimism is the reason they were able to deal with that? I I think the optimism probably came first, um, but also probably gets sharpened over time. I don't know if sharpened is the right word. We'll use it. We'll use it. But like you say, the trials and tribulations um, that they keep overcoming uh, and pulling success uh, of one type or another out of the hat after each trial, um, I think reinforces itself. And I think it comes out when you talk to them. 
Okay, great. I've been listening to your show, and uh, you say your wife is a musician. Is that correct? Yeah, my wife comes from a very musical family. Um, her undergraduate degree was in music, and uh, she's, she's born and raised in Hawaii, but she uh, studied back at uh, in Rochester, New York, at uh, some university back there. I can't remember it. And after all this time, she's still bitter about the winters. <laughs> um but winters are cold winters out there. are nasty back there and they pissed her off something terrible uh so she's much happier in california but she passed a, she passed down her musical genes um to my boys and uh my youngest son liam he's 14 now just started high school he has turned into one hell of a guitarist he's really really got some chops and he's picking up drums and i can see that he's really he really gets a lot of joy out of music, and that's what I want for him. My oldest son, Evan, he's 17. He's a senior, and um, he dabbles in piano, and he gets a lot okay. of enjoyment out of it. Uh, so my two sons fortunately take after their mother. They've, they've, they're they're going to have music that's going to take them through life. You know, When they get bored or something, they'll pick up their instrument. If they get frustrated, I hope they'll pick up their instrument and uh, make something to make themselves feel better, make some music. Right on. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Like I'm it's always exciting to hear about music through the family and like how how the family adapts that too. You'll find that a lot of people that you talk to have either come from a family that has been very musical mm -hmm. or very entertainment based or they are the black sheep and kind of start their own path towards the entertainment base in their family. Yeah. Yeah. Um I could see I could see my youngest son possibly uh, being in a band and you know in high school. I think that would be kind of fun. I would encourage him if he decided he wanted to do that. And uh, I'd be the I'd be the dad driving the Prius around with all the equipment stuck in the back. You know <laughs> that kind of thing. So, what kind of music is your son into? He's into a lot of um, '60s and '70s rock and roll. Uh, he's he's got a great teacher named Tom Lorada who is uh, almost an institution in, in San Mateo, California, and uh, who's been teaching for 20, 30 years. He's been playing for over 40 years. And um, they're really into, uh, oh, God, Black Sabbath and, uh, oh, gee, Springsteen, some Queen, you know, all kinds of stuff. Okay, all right. So starting kind of at the roots of rock and roots of metal and... Moving and forward. That, that's... Moving on forward, yeah, that's a good place to start. And so, and you know, a lot of those you just have to get the three chords that you said you have down, but learn to transition. Learn to transition them. between them, yeah. <laughs> and Liam can do that; he's doing a really good job. And Evan can work his there way up go. and down the keyboard. And they just look at their father and just go, hey, "You're hopeless." No, yeah, come on, Dad, keep up. No, keep ain't gonna up. happen, son. Here, let me let me bring something up on my iPhone. I'll play that for you. That's that's about it. <laughs> All right, all right. So with your with your podcast, the Bay Area Band Show, uh, what made you, besides the title, decide to focus just on the Bay Area? Well, um, you know, when I decided I wanted to do a podcast, I I did a lot of research on it, and uh, a word that uh, was used a great deal in in an awful lot of the material I read when when thinking about your subject matter, your editorial matter, the word was niche. You know, you go after a niche, a niche. And um, so for me, uh, I thought making it specifically about Bay Area bands um, and with a little bit of overflow so that if cool bands came through and I somehow, you know, found out about it and they wanted to be on, I could pull that off, right? That's how yeah. I have touring bands kind of tacked on there. Um I just felt that that was a, a really good focus. I thought it was focused enough that I could come up with a title that was totally self-explanatory. It's very easy to wrap your head around. And if you've got an interest in this topic, it's going to be very quick to pick up and home in on. So that's kind of what caused me to, to focus it and position it in that manner. Cool. With the, uh... With being so niche in your market, uh, do you find it hard to find enough bands just in the Bay Area to keep your show going? So far, I've been really lucky. Um, it it 
uh, as so many of us do, it comes in spurts. Um, you know, there might be, <laughs> there might be weeks where I don't hear anything from anybody, but I, there's several different avenues that I pursue or I post information saying, Hey, I'm out here. I'd like to talk to you. And then all of a sudden I'll get three, four, five, six bands come through in a, in a week or two saying, Hey, we want to set something up. And so I generally run uh, with, um, about eight interviews uh, ahead of me, if, if that makes sense. In other words, when I interview, if I interview John and Becky uh, today, it's going to be about eight or nine weeks before their episode hits the interwebs because of all the backlog I've got. And that's what helps me keep the verisimilitude of a steady supply going. You know what I mean? It really ebbs and flows, but I've got enough of a, a, enough of a backlog built up that I have a buffer. It does, yeah, that does help. I I had one of those for a while, and then uh, it slowly dwindled, and now I'm working on building it back up. So it really sucks when you're down to that last moment, looking to trying to get an interview for the next week. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I think one advantage I've got, and it, I can't, I can't say that it's helped tremendously, but it has been helpful, is that I interview virtually all face to face. So I have people come to my garage, kind of like a la Mark Marin again. Uh, the patron saint of podcasters, <laughs> and um, I have business cards for my for my show. And what I ask them is, you know, at the end, is if you've had a good time, if you thought this was a, a good use of your time, would you consider sharing some cards with musician friends that you have uh, that might be interested in joining joining me? And the the response to that has been uh, almost universally positive. Um, and I've gotten probably about four or five bands out of word of mouth. I've also okay. gotten um, a couple of bands from uh, a given musician being part of two or three different projects concurrently. You know, so um, whereas you know you work remotely exclusively, and you, so you don't you don't have quite have that thing going. I don't think. It's been remotely exclusively as of now. I'm not opposed to doing interviews in person. Mm -hmm. It's just that most of my connections have been in the Midwest. Right. And or further away than the Bay Area Absolutely. here. So it's hard to set that up for an in-person interview. And actually, if we go back to the question you asked earlier, you know, what was one of the reasons or what were some of the reasons that I focused on the Bay Area? Proximity was one of the major <laughs> reasons. Okay, you know, was that I wanted to be, I wanted people to be close, and I know this is, area is a musical nexus, and um, so it's it's knock on wood, it's been working out relatively well. Do you have any um, interview disaster stories? Oh gosh, um, yeah, I don't want to name names, but um, I've had. Uh, don't want to throw you under the bus. No, here, no, no, but, no. But who is it? I've who never it? had. No. <laughs> I've never had an unpleasant interview. I've never had a situation where where uh, the interaction was wrong, right? Okay. Which I've been very fortunate about. I mean, everybody I've dealt with, just about to to a T, has been open and 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 forthcoming and and pleasant and fun. Uh, there's an awful lot of laughter around when we're when we're doing the interviews and stuff. The difficulties have come from generally from people that if this was like their first interview that they'd ever done as a musician, um, it's kind of a scary thing coming into a strange, strange place, sitting down across the table from a stranger with microphones and headsets and all of this. And they got kind of the deer in the headlights look and yeah. the answers became very monosyllabic and their brains got wiped. So whatever data they had in their head that they wanted to share when they walked in got wiped clean as soon as they sat down in the chair. Um, I had one interview that from beginning, middle to end was about 12 minutes. And as you know, that's, that's not usable. You can't, you can't really do anything with that. And also the, the poor person was, was so tongue tied that there wasn't really any information in those 12 minutes. Do you have any uh, any tricks of the trade for dealing with a interviewee that might not be able to open up right away, whether it's because they're because they're new and tongue tied and nervous or if they're just sheltered? Do you have? Yeah, basically, um, I always make sure that I've got water 
hoist uh, at the at the at the the seats for the people that come in. And if if I've gotten an impression that they're that they're going to be kind of tongue tied or kind of reticent, I'll always dose the water um, before we start. It's always yeah, that's good. That's you good. Just, Don't let them know. No, you ever just sit and look at your microphone? You know that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> I, I find the pre-interview really helpful. Um, before we even fire up any mics, I I try to sit down with people for ten or fifteen minutes and just kind of chew the fat. How's the day been? How are you doing? You know, how's the wife and kids? Not in a in a calculated way, but more just to kind of get a rapport going that okay. that we can then build on uh, when the mics come up. And I've found that that generally works really well. Uh, so I think I think the pre-interview process is key. Um, I try to have. Uh, I also send out a uh, a question list to the people before they come on board, and I make it very clear to them that this is not an exercise. I don't expect you to fill this out and bring it to me. Um, it's not <laughs> a script. This is not the way that I expect the interview to go. But this is more like. These are these are the areas that that I'm expecting we'll touch on and and think about them, you know have have some have some fertilizer in there and and turn things over in your head so that if they crop up you've got somewhere to go and uh, just like you do I endeavor to be very much in the moment during the conversation um, I'm very very happy if in in the course of the talk that I realize I haven't looked at my question list in 15 minutes. And what's even better <laughs> is if I'm working with a band that's got, you know, se- obviously several people in it and they're all here when they start, when they start questioning each other and bringing up stories and so on and so forth, then I just sit back, put my feet up, crack a beer and put a big smile on my face. And we just have a grand old time. <laughs> you know, the, the podcast almost produces itself. Um, now people may say, yeah, and it sounds like it. I don't know. Hopefully, not. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I, I love that aspect of it. I, I, I really, that's one of the main reasons I got into this was, was to, uh, kind of build up more of a social circle as well for myself, you know? So I've gotten to know people. We, eh, we don't keep in close touch, but we do keep in some contact and I really enjoy that. I've actually had one band. Um, one, one thing that was great is I interviewed this band that uh invited me to one of their shows and so i went out and watched them play out in uh, pacifica at a really cool tavern it's about a century old building called winter's tavern out in pacifica and i got to listen to them and they introduced me to the band that was sharing the bill with them all right okay and this band came in and they were from reno nevada and these guys are telling me, yeah, we're, we're on a tour. We're going through, we're going through California, um, on up into Washington and back down to the East Bay. They're doing kind of this horseshoe through California. And Hey, this other band told us what you do and could we be on the show? And I was like, oh yeah, that'd be freaking great, man. You know? So what we would uh, spit in a handshake that Sunday afternoon, they came by Monday morning and we had a wonderful time. This band was called Fail- Failure Machine. And I think I listened to that episode. They are a kick. Actually. They are a blast. And they've got an incredible horn section. And uh, turn out some uh, garage music that's just, that's just out of this world. Just really, really good. Really infectious. Uh, the lead singer is a hell of a writer. And um, they put out some beautiful stuff. And so I got... I had one interview with the band that I went to see, and then I got another impromptu interview with these guys the following day. And then uh, about two months later, they contacted me again. Hey, we're coming through town again, and we're, sh- we're, we're working with another band out of Las Vegas. Would it be cool if we brought them by and you interviewed them? And they were you know, doing the same thing, a horseshoe, a horseshoe tour through California. I was like, hell yeah, bring them on over. And we had a wonderful time. And... Um, that band is called Rusty Maples out of Las Vegas, and that show will be coming up in the next several weeks uh, out into the interwebs. And um, so that kind of stuff just is just lovely, just wonderful, just just makes me all excited. 
You got to love when uh, the bands do the work for you and help with referrals, you know? Yeah, and not only that, but I mean, obviously, here's my fragile male ego, right? It means they like me, you know, that kind of thing. That always helps, <laughs> right? You know, it does, doing my, it does. Doing it, makes you, it makes you feel all warm and fuzzy in your side. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, you get beyond a certain age, you can use that every now and again. <laughs> I uh, I did listen to that Failure Machine episode. I'm, you're right. They do have a really good horn section. I enjoyed listening to the band's banter uh, between each other. And uh, were, were those live performances in your garage? Yeah. Yeah. They. Um, excuse me. Yeah, that was, a li- that was a live performance in the garage. It was only the second one I've done. I've just got a couple of uh, condenser mics that I string out in the middle of the garage. They're uh, AT. 3025s, I think, or 2035s, one or the other. They're, you know, yeah. it, they're low end, medium end uh, mics. And I don't know what I'm doing mixing wise, but most of the people that I've, I've had do that sound okay. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's an awful lot of fun. And then it's just, you know, it's just total gravy for me because I, I get a show. I get to sit back, relax, and listen to this and, and get this real live vibe going on. It's, it's like a command performance. It's just phenomenal when that, when that comes together. That does have to be cool. A personal concert, pretty much, for yourself. Yeah. Like, king yeah. for a day. Absolutely. And, and they're grateful when they're done, which I can't figure out for the life of me. <laughs> you know? But uh, it's terrific. Uh, I do know, I do know that one listener bought one CD for one band that was on my podcast. So I'm helping them out that way. Right. <laughs> you know, yes, that kind yes. of thing. Uh, Give a little gas, a little bit of gas money for one band. Yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah. so boom. What are you doing to promote your show? That's, that's a tricky one. Um, I think I have not really come out with a good, come up with a good promotion plan. Um, I am very, very Twitter deficient. Uh, I think I've only got 13 followers on Twitter for the Bay Area Band <laughs> Show. So um, I do have a Facebook page. I've got a Google Plus uh, Hangout collection. Um, I think where the word gets out is when I ask people to come on the show because I put it out in a number of different venues that request, and anybody can see it. Um, so I think that kind of helps. I honestly don't have a very good answer for you. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. I, well, it's not shows to me because like, I wish I did have a better marketing plan that would get me, you know, get me some real traction. You got a little bit of word of mouth going yeah. on. And when you're just getting started out, you kind of need to start grassroots, Absolutely. you know, just like pound the pavement. You're not going to like take out like a Super Bowl ad. No. no. Highly unlikely. Yeah. I did experiment with an ad campaign through Facebook. And, um, that was reasonably inexpensive. It garnered me some, some likes around the world, which was kind of fun. Um, and I did notice a bump in listenership and it was not a very large investment. Uh, I mean, it was on the order of $55 and, uh, I can't quite determine if the bump in listenership is directly tied to that investment or if it's just serendipity coincidence um but they the two things did occur kind of synchronously so boom you know that may or may not have helped it's important to get out there and experiment with uh, with ways to get your show out in front of other people whether it is word of mouth or flyering places or Mm -hmm. even a facebook campaign yep but uh, let's go back to what got you into uh, podcasting. You've mentioned Mark Marin a few times throughout mm-hmm. this. Is he like your main podcasting influence? Um, he his was the first podcast that I really got attached to. Um, I haven't listened in, in quite a while now, but uh, I really enjoy the energy that he brings to it. I love the vulnerability that 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 he brings to it as well. Um, I think, I think there is a real genuine aspect to the conversations that he has that I respect. Um, another, uh, podcast that I love and I, I, I try to help out a little bit a month on Patreon is, uh, 
Gilbert Gottfried's amazing colossal podcast. That guy, he's turning into my hero. I want to be Gilbert Gottfried when I grow up. Of course, I'll have to be a bit <laughs> shorter, but really what does he talk about on his podcast what, uh, what gilbert does is he interviews uh old movie and television actors and actresses primarily and um so i've always i was always interested in that when i was a kid i used to watch all the talk shows when i was younger and uh so i really enjoy hearing interviews with guys like john biner um a, a lot a lot of older entertainers that i watched growing up so i love that I ha- I haven't heard that podcast. Does he have his patented Gilbert Godfrey voice where it sounds oh, like hell he's yeah. about that's, to have that's a coronary all every time? That's all he is. He's having a coronary or getting a colonoscopy. I can't decide exactly what's happening with him. Maybe both. Maybe both at the same time. <laughs> it does sound painful when he talks. It does. It does. But um, I tell you, there are times when I'm feeling a little under the weather and I put that on and I feel better. What is the name of that show again? It's Gilbert Gottfried's Amazing Colossal Podcast. And he he uh, runs the interview with a co-host, a great comedy writer named Frank Santo Padre. And they've got a great rapport going. Um, they do beautiful research on the people that they talk to and do a real good tag team interview. Uh, the only thing that I wish Gilbert would change is he insists on singing in almost every podcast. And that is painful. And does that sound like his speech? Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. oh God. It's just, it's, it's horrible. I mean, I laugh, but, but it's, uh, Oh, Gilbert, please. That's where you're like, thank you for the 30 second forward button. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But I love Gilbert Gottfried. I've, I've been a fan of his for decades and, uh, I just, I just, uh, he's another person. I think, um, that his, in spite of the persona that he projects, um, there's a there's a real genuineness that's underneath that that comes across and um i respond to that a great deal that does seem to be a theme for you like uh with him and mark maron those are the two things that they have in common of the shows is the genuineness behind their questions yeah does that influence your interview style I, th- I think so. I'm, I'm not, I would love to be a much better interviewer. I'd love it if I had the focus of mind to, uh, devote real time to sharpening my interviewing skills. But the, the, the thing I'm after, uh, when I'm talking with someone is a connection. Um, I don't want to be best friends with anybody necessarily, but I want to feel like I want to feel like we're two individuals that are having a real conversation. And, um, I think I can, I think I can pull that off. I think I'm fairly good at that. Um, nobody wants to pay me to do it, but that's fine. And, uh, I, I get a lot out of that when that, when that occurs and I can feel it relatively quickly, about five or 10 minutes into a conversation when that occurs, I'm on top of the world. I'm feeling wonderful. When you are, um, having conversations in regular life Mm -hmm. not podcast Mm -hmm. life do you find yourself interviewing people yeah that's something that's actually something that i've always done throughout my life um i deal with uh some real social anxiety um i'm very nervous when i'm around people i don't know and uh, I've, i've been that way all my life And one of the ways that I've learned to circumvent that is to seek out the type of connection that, that, that I've talked about here. And, and I do that, uh, I didn't real, I didn't realize that this was a process that I used until relatively recently in the last several years. But, um, when I'm, when I'm around people that I don't know that we're in proximity and we're going to be in proximity for a matter of for some period of time that's beyond our control, um, I will tend to start talking to them and I will tend to, uh, try to elicit information about them, their lives and so on and so forth and share if they, if they respond in kind, share with them. Yeah. But I find that that conversational process calms a lot of the anxiety that I feel and, uh, helps me to function in that situation a lot more smoothly than if I just uh, keep it all inside and, and don't say anything to anyone or don't make eye contact. That that makes me even more uncomfortable. How did you realize that this was a way of dealing with your social anxiety? Um, through therapy, through, through a lot of therapy, and uh, having friends comment 
on, on things over the last several years. Oh yeah. You know, you've always done X, Y, Z, or I've always seen you with people behaving in this manner. If, if you don't know them, you start questioning them. And, uh, so I kind of put two and two together and realized, yeah, that's, that's, that's a tool that I've used all this time. Okay, so that's something that you've actually been able to take from your social uh, anxiety and you'd be able to use that in your podcast then yeah. with your interviewing skills? Exactly. I'm terrified before an interview. It's, it's gotten much better with time, but I mean, the first five or six interviews, it was a 50-50 shot whether I was going to go through it or call them up and cancel at the last minute. Now, I never did that, which I'm very proud of. I never, <laughs> never gave into that impulse. Um, you know, I sat through the interview and sweated through it and, and the people had a good time. And I finally reached the point now where I'm relatively confident that people I talk with are going to enjoy themselves. And that's very important to me. And yes. that, uh, we're going to come up with something that's not too hideous. And that's very important to me. <laughs> and I generally have a smile on my face when we're done. And that's very important to me. Um, and based on gaining that certain level of confidence, my, uh, my anxiety pre-show has diminished proportionately. Um, it's still there and some days are worse than others, but, um, for the most part, it's totally manageable now, which is, which is nice. It's a good change. Okay. Yeah, that, that is awesome. I'm glad it's cool to see people be able to turn their quote unquote weaknesses into their strengths. Yeah. If you're, if you, know? you can do it, it's, it's, it's a gift, you know, there's it is. plenty of weaknesses I got that I can't touch, but this is one that, uh, I've been able to machine a little bit. Nice. Nice. Do you find yourself, do you ever listen to your show? Yeah. Um, th there's a couple of favorites I've got that I've listened to. I don't listen to them as a matter of course. Um, I listen through the editing and polishing process. Um, and, uh, once I get it shipped off, I'm generally, I feel a little better. I feel some pressure when I'm, when I'm going through that process, but there are a few shows that I've listened to and I like, I mean, uh, every single one of them can be done better. Uh, the, the, the bar could be raised significantly. I just don't know quite how to do it, how to pull it off yet. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm pretty satisfied with what I put out. Uh, the, you know, the one thing that, that, uh, I don't know if disappoints me is the right phrase to use, but I wish I was, I wish I could generate some sort of a rapport with the audience. Um, I know people are downloading and I, you know, I've got some numbers, um, but getting people to write a review or to write a rating has been a non-starter for me. And um, that indicates to me that I'm not reaching people in the manner that I would like. Now, I may be reading too much into that. That just may be, you know, the way the beast works for a lot of people. I don't know. Yeah, I think people in general, and like with Yelp reviews to podcast reviews, will only like rate something, go out of their way to rate something if one they really hate it, or one, or on the other hand, they really really love it. Yeah, you know, if it's like, oh, dude, I like this show, I'm gonna keep listening. A lot of times they won't. And that's probably where we're at. Take that extra step. Yeah, I think that's where we're um, at. And I think maybe if you continue asking and continue asking, you'll eventually get the people to come. And when they see that other people are leaving reviews, mm -hmm. this is all hypothesis, by the way. But uh, when they see other people are leaving reviews, they'll be like, oh, OK, this is cool to do now. I'll do it. Yeah, it might it might snowball at that point. Or at least so I wanna, up a little. I would try not to get too hung up on that myself. I work very hard at not getting too hung up on any aspect of this, uh, actually. You know, um, I, I, I do this for fun. I do this for uh, relaxation and um, in spite of the anxiety that it engenders. <laughs> so go figure that one out. And uh, uh, I do it for all sorts of positive, positive reasons. So, yeah, the hung up stuff... Not too hung up. Not too hung up. I don't lose any sleep over this. All right. Great. Great. Well, Steve, I have a couple questions that I ask all my guests uh, here on Uncontained. How do I live um, my life uncontained? I'm not to that one. Damn yet. it. You're way too uncontained right now. Oh. Contain yourself just a damn minute, please. Take another pill. I'll be just fine. <laughs> all right. Uh, my first question that I ask yeah. 
is do you have any advice for anybody getting started in podcasting or looking maybe to take their next step in podcasting? Can we come back to that one? Yeah, yeah. we can ask we me can the, come ask back me the to next that. few questions and then we'll double back to that one. Okay. We will we will live uncontained here. We'll, we can do that. I typically have the two that I typically only have two that I ask every uh, guest, but oh, okay. I'm working on throwing in a couple extra ones here. Uh, one of those was when I asked earlier today, how do you uh, promote yourself? Mm -hmm. But uh, let's see. Are you a, just curious, are you a coffee person? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't get the caffeine buzz that I used to when I was younger, which I really miss. Um, but that might have to do with the medications <laughs> I'm on. Um, but yeah, oh, I love coffee. Tea doesn't do it for me. Coffee and Diet Pepsi, man. Coffee and diet Pepsi. Not at the what same kind of time. coffee? Oh, you don't double fist? I don't. Not not since my college days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we won't go into those stories. Uh, <laughs> um, I uh, I get my coffee online from some Arab Arabica coffee plantation, something like that. Okay. All right. Dark roast, light roast. Dark what roast. kind of guy? Are Dark you? roast, French All roast. Right. That's what I like. All right. Like the coffee with the flavor. Mm -hmm. That's and the, caffeinated. Correct. And it's not caffeinated. like. Not crack free crack coffee. Uh uh. No. That that's okay. what's the point. That's a way Exactly. Of like non alcoholic beer. That, what's the point, you know? I hear you. Okay. So are you ready with the uh, advice? Yeah. Go. What advice do you have for people who are looking to put out a podcast or are in the midst of podcasting looking to take the next step? Well, I consider myself still a beginning podcaster. You know, I haven't been doing this a year yet. Uh and I think the best advice I can give someone is to do it for the fun of it. Don't be, don't be looking to make a living off it. Don't be looking to have a thousand downloads an episode in your first, you know, 18 weeks. It's not likely. Um, do it because you enjoy the technology of it or you enjoy talking with people, or you, the, the subject matter is so enthralling to you that you're one of these people that whatever the topic is that you're working on, you can talk about that day and night and not run out of air. Uh, those are the reasons to get involved. And don't put a lot of pressure on yourself to be the next, oh, gee whiz, who's, you know, who's big in broadcasting these days anymore? You know, you're not going to be like Ryan Seacrest. You're not going to be the next Ryan Seacrest in a in a in a in a six month period. Um, yeah. If you're if you're putting that kind of pressure on yourself, it's going to become drudgery very quickly. Do it because you enjoy it. Do it because you get your geek rocks off doing it. <laughs> because you get a social outlet through doing it, and that's what'll sustain you. So. For me, that's it. Very good advice and uh, something I believe people should listen to, especially being a beginning podcaster myself as well. Uh, watching the numbers, hoping they climb every every week, every oh, month. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, every day I'm checking you know, those. And yeah, if you let it, it can become obsessive. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I don't recommend doing it to that degree. Um, but when I see, you know, I'm, I'm, my numbers are trending up. That makes me very happy. It's uh, two steps forward, one step back. I'm cool with that, you know. So life is good in, in Shea O'Sullivan land uh, with the Bay Area Band Show from that perspective. Nice. And we will get to that final question you wanted to answer earlier yeah. right now. Um, how do you live uncontained, Steve? I really don't anymore. I don't live uncontained. Um I lived all my uncontained stuff in my 20s and 30s. So now it's more I'm just going with the flow and uh, enjoying myself that way. So I don't know if that's the answer you want, but it's the honest to God truth. The honest to God truth is all I can ask for, Steve. Beautiful. That's all I can ask for. I don't want you to make up some story for me nope. like I go out and uh, shoot uh, bottle rockets at midgets as I walk by. No, 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 day. no. I use them as the launchers. <laughs> all right. So, um, Steve, thank you for coming on Uncontained. Um, do you have any contact information for how they can get a hold of you, how they can get a hold of uh, the show if they want to listen to it? Absolutely. Um, the Barrier Band Show is on iTunes. We're also on Stitcher. Um, we're also available through Google Play Music. Um, 
I'm on Google Plus Hangouts. Um, so it's, it's all over the place. If anybody is, if, if you're a musician or a band and you meet the criteria, which are that you're either based in the San Francisco Bay area or you tour through the San Francisco Bay area and you'd like to be on the show, please go to the Bay area band show.com slash podcast dash booking. And, uh, there's a page there where you can, uh, either email me from that page or you can, uh, start acquiring a date to set up an interview and, and we'll contact from there. Um, if you have any questions about the Bay area band show, you'd, you'd want to be on it, but you're not quite sure what it entails. Please send me an email at Steve at the Bay area band show.com. And I will definitely reply. All right, great. I will put those in my show notes. Thank you, sir. And, uh, thank you very much for, uh, being a part of the show and living uncontained here. <laughs> Uh, will you do me one favor, Anything. which I have all my guests do? I have them sign off the show. Will you do me the favor of signing off today? I'm Steve O'Sullivan from the Bay Area Band Show, and I live uncontained. Thank you for listening to Uncontained, and thanks again to Steve O'Sullivan from the Bay Area Band Show stopping in and talking to us on Uncontained today. Make sure you check out his show, new episodes, every Wednesday. His links will be in the show notes for the Bay Area Band Show, and also his contact information will be there as well. Be sure to drop Steve a line and let him know that you heard him here on Uncontained. As I mentioned before, all of his contact information will be in the show notes. And please join the people who have already left me comments on iTunes and SoundCloud. It doesn't matter which pod player you use, but please rate, review, share, and subscribe to Uncontained. Thanks again for listening. And as always, live uncontained.